now i'm kind now i'm continuing to the previous video class regarding the sale of goods act sir you told about the differences between sale and agreement to sell okay after that what is the next thing that we will come across okay i am taking into account the difference between sale and other types of things for example higher purchase agreement higher purchase agreement barter system bailment all these things i am going to take into account and contracts for works and materials all these things i am going to take all these differences in this video class okay when you go for sale right on that moment only you will come across the transfer of property in goods that is from seller to buyer it will they will go the buyer he will ready to give the goods to the buyer and the buyer is ready to pay the amount to the seller now when you go for higher purchase system what is this higher purchase system when you want to take a commodity when you want to take an asset and when it seems to be very useful to you okay first of all you have to think whether i can pay the complete amount whether i am having the complete amount with me or not first of all you have to see suppose if you are not having i mean complete amount you are having a little amount then when you come across the necessity of that you will go to the person sir i want that commodity it is very essential and very useful for me and i am not having enough money to pay you right now i am having a few amount and i want to take the asset and i want to pay the amount whatever i am having and remaining balance whatever it may be i am going to pay you in installments like that you will come and you will approach that person and if the person if he agrees if the vendor if he agrees then you will get the commodity and whatever it may be the amount that you are having you will pay to that person and remaining amount you will pay in installments okay yearly installments or half yearly installments when you are going for installments one thing you have to keep in mind is you have to pay interest amount also and for the payment of interest amount also you are ready to pay then you will take into account how many how much is the amount and in how many yearly installments i have to pay the remaining amount like that you will agree with that vendor and the vendor he will give you the asset and you have to pay the installment amount and whenever any installment when it is lacking the higher vendor okay just as a higher you are taking the asset whatever it may be the amount that you are paying they will appear as a higher higher charges for using that okay asset whenever you are a defaulted person in payment of any installment amount the higher vendor has the right to take back the asset in whatever may be the position you are having and he will return the asset only after payment of the last installment up to that extent he won't that is the transfer of ownership it will go until and unless the last installment was paid the transfer of ownership from the vendor to the buyer to the purchaser it will be transferred only after the last installment was paid up to that extent you are paying the higher charges for using that asset so there is lot of difference between higher purchase system and sale in sale the transfer of ownership from seller to buyer you will come across at a time at a stretch but in higher purchase system the transfer of ownership you won't come across until and unless you pay the last installment suppose if you are a defaulted person he will take the asset along along with him in whatever condition may be and 
suppose if you ask, I am paying, no, you are paying just for hire. You have taken the commodity or the asset on hire and whatever your payment that you are paying, it is nothing, it is treated as hire charges. Like that. And in this context, I'm going to give you a small example. People, they are seeing the autos. When you observe the autos, on the auto, you will come across the birds per hire. Per hire. If you think that if you call an auto and if you sing a seat into that auto, you cannot say that it is my auto. You are taking the auto on hire. You are taking the auto on hire. So whatever it may be the payment that you are paying, it is treated as higher charges. And another thing is, this is a peculiarity. The people who are running the auto, who are, they will also won't pay the complete amount. Whatever it may be, the amount that they are having, they will pay the amount to the manufacturer of autos. And after that, they'll go for finance, bank finance. And they will keep one key with the bank people. And the bank people, he, they will give a check for the whole amount and they, you will take that and you will hand over that. And you will get the auto. But one thing you have to keep in mind is, you have to pay to the bank people because you have taken finance from the bank people. And whenever you are a defaulted person, whenever you are a defaulted person, the bank people, they will come and they will take the auto. That's why we will come across hypothecation with SBI, hypothecation with Canara Bank, hypothecation with Andhra Bank. On the back side, you will come across these words. It means these people, they have taken the auto on finance from the bank people. And whenever you are a defaulted person in payment of the finance, whatever it may be, they have a right, the bank people, they have a right to take this asset and they can sell that in the open market. And the auto driver and the auto owner, he cannot object because he is a defaulted person to the bank people. In the same way, you will come across higher budget. Okay, this is also one type of sale, please. Mind it, this is also one type of sale. But sale is entirely different and higher purchase system is entirely different. Under higher purchase agreement, the owner of the goods lets them out on, let them out on hire for periodic rent on the terms that on completion of the agreed number of payments, the hirer is to have the option to buy the goods. This is the beautiful thing that we will come across. Okay. On the hire purchase agreement, the owner of the goods lets them out on hire for periodic rent on the terms that on a completion of the agreed number of payments, the hirer is to have is to have the option to buy the goods. Then only is having the option to buy the goods. Until then, he has no right to purchase the goods. On payment of the full amount, the property in the goods passes to him, but the owner shall have the right to resume position of the goods on the hirer, on the hirer's failure to pay any one of the installments of rent or any other breach by the hirer of the terms of the agreement. If he break, if he break any agreement, that's why we call that thing as hire purchase agreement. If he won't pay the regular installments, or if we break, if there is a breakdown, okay, by the hirer of the terms of the agreement, by the hirer, 
it is higher purchase in simple words higher purchase agreement is equal to bailment plus agreement to sell see the picture higher purchase agreement is equal to bailment plus agreement to sell these things and in sale of goods it is not like that okay immediately the transfer of ownership it will go from the seller to the buyer that's all there is a matter but this type of payments this type of break breakdown of the conditions by the higher hirer or higher purchaser you won't come across and one thing that thing also higher purchase system is also one type of sale and what are the differences that we come across between sale and higher purchase first one is nature of contract ownership transfers from the seller to the buyer as soon as the contract is entered into that's all there is a matter price of paisa okay ownership from higher vendor to higher purchaser only only when a certain agreed number of installments are paid this is the thing that you will come across next position the position of the buyer is that of owner when you purchase the goods you will become the owner i am the owner of the goods like that you can demand and you can say stubbornly but here it is not like that the position of the higher purchase is that of bailer 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 bailey so what is this the agreement between bailer and bailey is nothing but bailment one thing whatever it may be the property that one person is having when you want to take the property and when you want to use them and when you want to return that back to the person we will call that thing as bailment and the person giving the goods will call him as bailer and the person who is taking the goods and using who want to use them will call the him as bailee so bailer bailey this thing you must be very careful next termination of the contract the buyer cannot terminate the contract as such bound to pay the price of the goods the buyer has no right to break down the contract or terminate the contract he has to pay the price is bound to pay the price but here in higher purchase it is not like that you can terminate the contract the higher purchase has an option to terminate the contract at any time and cannot be forced to pay any further installments if you are purchasing any asset you can terminate the contract at any time you can terminate the contract at any time okay and you can stop the payment of the installments that is in higher purchase system okay these are the various differences that we come across between sale and higher purchase system now we are going for sale and barter system what is this barter system exchange of goods for goods is nothing but barter system this is the oldest method of interchange of goods from one person to another person okay then when there is no invention of money when money was not invented people they'll go for exchange of goods for goods that's all and that thing is nothing but an oldest thing and it will call that thing as barter system it is if you take now it is also one type of sale but thing is you won't come across the presence of money over there you will come across exchange for goods goods or exchange for goods and there are so many hindrances in that system let us not go for those hindrances but thing is when you are exchanging goods for goods it is nothing but barter system when you are exchanging goods for money it is nothing but sale 
That is the difference that we come across between sale and barter system. When the property and goods is transferred from the seller to the buyer for a price is called sale. When goods are exchanged for goods, it is called barter and not a sale. When money is exchanged for money, it is called exchange. See the picture. When money is exchanged for money, it is known as exchange. When goods are exchanged for goods, it is known as barter. Okay. When goods are exchanged for the price, we call that thing as sale. So people, they must pay. observe the difference between sale, barter, and exchange. Now, sale and bailment. I told you that. Sale and bailment. In sale, the property and goods are transferred from the seller to the buyer. In bailment, there is only transfer of position of goods from the bailer to the bailee. Fiscal mean transfer of position of goods. Don't be of that opinion. The ownership will go. Only position of the goods from bailer to the bailee, they will go. Not the ownership. After usage of the commodities, again, the bailee has to return the goods to the bailer. So, ultimately, the bailer is the owner of the goods, not the bailee. Okay. People, they have to understand this also. Okay. Now, after this, there are some more points. In sale, the buyer can deal with the goods in any way he likes. See the picture. In sale, the buyer can deal with the goods in any way he likes. He can consume that. He can throw that to dustbin. He can resell that. Anything, whatever you do, it's none of my business. Like that, the seller, he'll say. So the buyer has a right to do anything with that goods. But in bailment, it is not like that. In bailment, the bailee can deal with the goods according to the discretion of the bailer. According to the discretion, you have to use the goods like this, like this. So, regarding the instructions, whatever it he receives from the bailer, the bailey has to use the goods. So, what is this? If you go for the present tent houses, you will get commodity, you will get chairs, glasses, plates, chairs, all those things from the tent house. You are taking the goods for your usage. And according to the instructions given by the tent house owner, you have to use them. You should not use them as you want, as you wish. Breaking the glasses, breaking the plates, breaking the chairs. Okay. Just tearing the Shamyanas, you should not do like that. You have to use them in the way that he instructs. And again, you are supposed to return the goods back to the tent house owner. That is nothing but bailment. That is nothing but bailment. And you should not treat that the commodities are yours. You are not the owner. You are not the owner. He is the owner. And you have taken the goods for your usage. So like this, you have to take. Next. Sale and contracts for work and materials. Sale and contract for work and materials. So what is this? Suppose if you are going to construct a building, I'm giving a small example in this context, thereby it will be clear for you. Okay. Suppose if you want to construct a building, you'll go for bricks, cement, everything, sand. And if you pay the money for bricks, cement, and sand, they'll give you. They'll give you, no doubt. And you can do whatever you like. Whether you are going to construct the building or whether you are going to pour on your head, it is none of their business. It is none of their business. 
but when you are going to do some work and for that when you require some materials then you have to take then you have to go for contract for work and materials that's why when you take into account a construction of building okay you will appoint a person contractor you will be called as contractee and you will appoint a person for the construction of building when you are going for that contract contractor you will ask one thing with materials or without materials with materials means he has to bring the materials what is what are required for the construction he is responsible he is responsible there is no headache for you to purchase the materials okay the uh, only thing is you have to see how far he constructed that in what way he constructed that whether it is good or bad like that only you have to do the inspection you have to observe okay you won't be any headache for you to are we have to get this cement we have to get this bricks we have to get this sand all these things no headache without materials means that person he will come and he will do the work but he won't bother about the materials you have to purchase you have to provide the materials whatever he asks whatever he asks you have to provide for that you have to break your head where these materials are available where how much amount they are going to charge how much is required all these things it is your headache to go for and most of the people what they will do is most of the people are with materials why i am going to give the contract with materials so it is the responsibility and it is the headache of the contractor to get the commodities and do the work and 90% of the people they'll go for this with materials and another not only that if you conduct a function in your house when you cannot able to cook the food you will go for catering and you will ask them you see we are not taking into account any headache of purchasing whatever you want we want these dishes and you have to purchase and you have to prepare and you have to bring that's all that is along with materials those people they have to purchase the materials and they have to cook and they have to bring to your place no no and we are now we are going to provide you the materials we don't have confidence on you we are going to provide materials and you have just to cook come and cook then we have to give in the in that case the headache starts with you what type of materials we have to purchase how much quantity of materials purchase how much amount we have to pay all these things you will have to break your head instead of that when people when they give that thing also to the caterers they will decide they will think and they will purchase and they'll do that this is the thing that we come across sale and contract for work and materials people they have to understand this that's why i explained this a contract of sale involves the delivery of goods whereas a contract for work and materials involves exchange of skill and labor by one party in respect of materials supplied by another this is the thing one person he will supply the materials and one person he will keep his skill and talent and he will do that when you go for market the farmers who are growing the vegetables they are the correct person they are the owners and the people what they will do is they will go to the farmers and they will purchase and they will bring that and they will sell that so if you understand that you can understand this they are using the tie skill and talent and they are selling but the actual owner of the vegetables are the farmers who are growing that 
excess of skill and labor by one party in respect of material supplied by another. The delivery of goods being subsidiary or incidental to the contract. Whether the delivery is the primary thing or the subsidiary. The subsidiary is nothing but the delivery of goods. We are going to deliver the goods at this place. So you have to go to that place and you have to tell. But don't be of that opinion that those people will come and deliver at our house. You have to go and you have to take the delivery of the goods. So that is nothing but the secondary thing that we recommend. The test generally applied to distinguish sale and contract for work and labor is that if as a result of the contract, property is uh, property in an article is transferred to one who had no property therein. Previously, for a money, for a money consideration, it is sale. Yeah, this is the thing that we'll come across. This is the thing that you'll come across. Okay. The test generally applied to distinguish sale and contract for work and labor is that if um, is that as a result of the contract property in an article is transferred to one who had no property therein, we are not having. We are not having bricks, we are not having sand, we are not having cement. In that case, this thing, contract to work and labor will come. Okay, previously for money, previously for a money consideration, it is uh, when they are bringing the materials and when they are constructing the house, then only you are paying the contract price. At that stage, it will be a sale. At that stage, it will be a sale. Until then, it is nothing but contract for work and labor. Goods from form the subject matter of contract for sale. This means every kind of mobile property other than auctionable claims and money goods include stock, shares, growing crops, grass, and things related and attached to or forming part of the land which are agreed to be served before sale. Trademarks, copyrights, patents, goodwill, electricity, water, gas are some of the examples of goods. This is very, very important. Goods from the subject form the subject matter of contract for sale. When there are goods only, then only you'll come across contract for sale. When there are no goods, you won't come across. Next, auctionable claims means a claim to any debt or any beneficial interest in mobile property, not in position. People, they may have the goods, but it is nothing but a claim. Okay, auctionable claims means a claim to any debt or any beneficial interest in movable property. When you are interested in any movable property, then only you have to go for this auctionable claims. There it is not a sale place. It is an auction. So with this, I am going to close and tomorrow we are going to continue.